Good morning. My name is Megan Edwards of Focus Communications, and today we're getting another update from SK Mining, which trades on the Toronto Venture Stock Exchange under the symbol ESK. And joining me today is SK's Vice President of Exploration, John DeDecker. John, thank you for stopping by to update us once again. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I just got back from a much needed vacation watching some volcanic eruptions in Hawaii and um ready to uh, get back and start planning next season. Um, so th thanks for having me back. Sounds like a fun vacation. <laughs> mm -hmm. So today, SK announced the first set of results from the 2022 exploration program along the TV Jeff system. Could you run us through these results and highlights from your campaign? Yeah, certainly, Megan. Um, first, I'll start off uh, with our disclaimer. Um, there will be four looking statements within this presentation, so please do your due diligence um, with uh, investing. So talk about uh, our um, uh, results that we have from the TV and Jeff area. So I, I would like to say that um, this drill program is really designed to test the full strike length of this uh, trend of uh, VMS showings on the east limb of the SK anticline. Therefore, we had really widely spaced uh, drill holes looking to test the full extent of these um, VMS systems. And um, as you've seen with the press release, uh, we have a TV where we've intercepted additional stock work mineralization, extending that uh, zone further to the north at TV. And I'd say most significantly, uh, we've actually shown that this massive sulfide, the upper massive sulfide zone that we discovered last year actually extends and um, kind of covers most of the stock work zone at TV. And I'd say that's the biggest thing that we've found at uh, TV and Jeff so far as we've significantly expanded uh, this upper uh, massive sulfide zone at TV. And that's where uh, the results that we've uh, presented in this news release are from. And there's many more uh, intercepts um, that we have in this massive sulfide zone with assays still pending. And then as you've seen at Jeff, we have our widely spaced drill holes where we've hit um, some broad zones of anomalous gold and silver mineralization extending uh, about 800 meters north of Jeff, um, as well as a considerable amount of base metal uh, VMS mineralization, uh, notably uh, zinc uh, with subordinate amounts of copper. So we, we're really starting to see um, at Jeff, uh, north of Jeff, that we're getting into more of your um, typical base metal rich VMS system, but we've certainly been able to show that that is, um, you know, pretty much 600 meters of continuous um, VMS sulfide mineralization at Jeff. So what are some major takeaways from this year's campaign along this TV Jeff VMS corridor? Well, I'd say our major takeaway is that um, TV still has room to grow. Um, you know, I'd say we've certainly tested a lot of the strike length of this massive sulfide showing, but some of our holes to the east have actually uh, shown that there's still potential to extend um, not only the massive sulfide, but the underlying stock work zone eastwards and down dip. Um, and we've also hit uh, some sulfides, assays are still pending up dip or to the west at TV. Uh, I'd say uh, probably one of the biggest things though is uh, going back to this um, base metal VMS north of Jeff, we're really starting to show that um, we're, we're working our way towards the SIB uh, Lulu showing, particularly this um, showing called the hexagon mercury uh, area, which was drilled in 2003. Uh, as I'll show here shortly, we're starting to see, based on our field work and our geophysics, that there is most likely a connectivity between this northern part of the SK anticline by Lulu and going down to uh, the Jeff North area. And I can talk about that here uh, shortly uh, when we look at um, some of the uh, geophysics figures. Yes. But, but, but what we're looking at right here on this figure are our first few intercepts uh, from the TV um, upper massive sulfide and stock work zone. And you can see uh, the Results that we've presented, TV97 here, that is our one of our northern extensions of this stock work zone. It's about 25 meters or so north of last year's intercept, TV2154, which was quite good. And then uh, 
TV 22109. This is the first intercept of the massive sulfide zone that we have coming back. And as I said, we have several more intercepts uh, through this massive sulfide zone, basically extending all the way from uh, 22109 almost all the way up uh, to TV 2297. So it, it's really quite a large zone of massive sulfide we've intercepted at TV. And uh, just showing you um, some examples of this massive sulfide right here. Uh, this is TB22109. I'd say this is pretty typical of this 100 meter strike length of this massive sulfide zone. Uh, we're, you know, dealing with uh, thicknesses between about five to 20 meters or so of massive sulfide. Um, and then that would be underlain by our stock work zone of which we uh, drilled into last year and we've ex um, extended quite a bit with drilling this year and assays are still pending from these uh, so we're really looking forward to seeing what the results are from these it uh, looks like um, what we're presenting in this release is just the the beginning hints of what we should expect from this zone at tv and then moving on to uh, Jeff North, uh, what we can see here, I'll, I'll um, annotate this a bit, is that we've got um, our lower Jeff zone right here and then the upper Jeff zone. Uh, these were drilled in 2020 and 2021. And what we see is that uh, there is an extension of these zones northwards along strike. I mean, we're talking up to 800 meters north of Jeff where we're still hitting um, stock work sulfide uh, as well as intense hydrothermal alteration in both of these horizons. So this is showing that we're um, still in a VMS system. It's actually quite a large system, a long strike on the east limb of the SK anticline. And uh, as we start working our way north, as I had mentioned, we're starting to get closer and closer uh, to the Sib and Lulu showings, which is, um, really uh, intriguing because you know that's part of the uh, hypotheses we were testing this year was to show you know do we have a vms district i would say yes we do have a vms district and in this case of uh, jeff uh, north uh, as i said we've hit quite a bit of copper and um, uh, zinc uh, here on the the left side of the image is copper which i mentioned is subordinate to the zinc but then on the, the right-hand side of the image, we've got um, our, a really zinc-rich uh, trend right over in here. And that uh, also extends a bit further to the north. And this is contiguous with the lower zone at Jeff. And uh, we uh, will show here shortly that uh, we did uh, some soil sampling this year that shows that there's a considerable zinc and silver anomalism and mercury anomalism that extends even further north of this along uh, the SkyTim conductors. Um, you also asked one of the big uh, takeaways from this uh, season, I'd say, uh, is the fact that we've got this large strike length and that most importantly, the SkyTim anomalies that we've been targeting all around the property. And I'm talking at Tarn Lake, um, talking at TV and Jeff, um, even at Excelsior, a lot of these SkyTim anomalies are associated with VMS mineralization. So that's um, really encouraging uh, news for looking at more of these um, sky tim anomalies along strike. John, can we go back a couple slides? Uh, can you discuss the follow-up strategy in this area? Will it be infill drilling or will you continue to extend the target? Um, we're, we're going to extend the target more. Um, Particularly at Jeff, uh, we're going to be working our way further north of uh, the drilling here with uh, field work, rock chip sampling, new geological mapping, as well as uh, soil sampling before we drill. Um, and then we're also going to be working our way southwards from uh, the Sib and Lulu area because we're really starting to see a geological connectivity along the SK Anticline coming south towards uh, the Jeff area. And then at TV, uh, we definitely have uh, much more robust gold and silver results there. Uh, and there, there's the possibility that we'll be doing um, some more infill drilling along there to better define this massive sulfide horizon that we've found. Uh, and what's the, the strike length now? The strike length, uh, we've got um, between uh, 
TV and all the way up to Jeff, about three and a half kilometers of strike length. Uh, there's still about three kilometers between Jeff North and the Lulu area, where there's also a substantial um, sky time anomaly that I'll talk about here shortly that we're going to be investigating next year. But we're really starting to kind of close in on this really difficult, rugged to explore area between Jeff North and Lulu. Um, and that's what we're working on right now is planning out our um, plan of attack for next season on that. So looking at uh, the sulfide mineralization that we've intercepted at Jeff, uh, as I mentioned, we've um, hit uh, a decent bit of copper and um, zinc mineralization, which is characterized by uh, chalcopyrite, which is our copper sulfide mineral, and then sphalerite is our zinc sulfide mineral. Both of these are associated with intensely silicified mudstone. So we know that we're still in the core of a VMS system and notably the presence of copper and zincs indicating we're in a more high temperature part of the VMS system. Um, and, and looking at SK Creek and TV and Jeff, um, what we see um, with the, the results that Skeen is uh, publishing as well as historic um, academic data uh, from SK Creek mine is that these tend to be more low temperature VMS systems. And it looks like as we're working our way northwards from Jeff, we're starting to get into more of a high temperature, um, you know, more traditional base metal VMS system. Uh, so we're, you know, we need to start vectoring towards more of these low temperature um, areas. And that's one of the things that we'll be looking at next year. And I, I also have uh, several graduate students working on this um, problem um, with uh, rock samples. And we look through microscopes to really try to um, characterize the hydrothermal alteration style and temperature and things like that so we can better um, understand where we are in these VMS systems. But one thing is clear, we do have a large strike length of VMS mineralization uh, that is variably precious metal endowed. Um, so as I had mentioned, uh, we're really um, this season and uh, going into 2023 starting to look at uh, the bigger picture here, um, you know, so a lot of the historic drilling uh, has been focused around this Sib and Lulu area. Um, the SK Creek deposits kind of right up here on the nose of the SK Anticline. Uh, I'd like to uh, draw attention to a lot of Skeena Resources' latest uh, releases, which are starting to show uh, that there's a considerable mineralization, not only heading closer to our property boundary, but I would say even more importantly, as we've been showing with TV and Jeff um, and some of the older drill results at Sib and Lulu, that there are multiple favorable horizons for VMS mineralization, not only within the upper Hazleton group, which is what all the yellow on here is, that's where the, um, you know, historically high grade world-class SK Creek mine is, but a lot of the drilling uh, that we've been doing as well as Skeena is starting to show uh, that we're going further down in the stratigraphy into the lower Hazleton group, which is kind of this um, purplish lilac color on here. It's coring the SK anticline. And as you'll see on this um, image here, we've got uh, the TV Jeff trend of EMS mineralization here, where I'd say TV's roughly 180 meters of silver and gold endowed uh, VMS mineralization at two stratigraphic horizons. Uh, there's a bit of a gap between TV and Jeff of about a kilometer and a half or so. And then we get to another volcanic center where we've got a lot of more volcanic rock. And um, we have Jeff where there's um, gold and silver mineralization. And then working north to Jeff North, we're starting to get into our uh, base metal mineralization with subordinate amounts of gold and silver. But what we're starting to show is that this trend on the east limb of the SK anticline is working its way towards the north. Um, and then we have our uh, hexagon mercury showing, which was drilled a little bit in 2003 uh, right here. And this is also in Betty Creek formation uh, rock. And as I'll show here um, on the next slide, there are geophysical uh, conductors that are linking Jeff North towards hexagon mercury, as well as a trend of um, gold bearing uh, legacy rock chip samples. And, um, you know, I, I should note 
as well uh, that we do have a whole other trend over here on the Scarlet uh, Ridge Tarn Lake trend uh, that we're very excited about. And um, we should be expecting uh, releases on this area uh, coming up over the next uh, several weeks. But this is a very, um, very prospective area, um, mostly hosted by the SK Rhyolite. That would be uh, the same uh, rock unit that is uh, hosting the SK Creek deposit. So we, we do have these two parallel trends of mineralization along these two different anticlines. But, you know, the focus of our current release is uh, really extending TV, Jeff, and Jeff North. And we're starting to see our, our geological connectivity to um, the hexagon mercury area, which is just to the um, east of the Lulu zone. Okay. So uh, this is our SkyTim conductivity map uh, that's in the press release where we have our historic rock chip samples, our squares on here, uh, gold and grams per ton. And we also have our soil sampling. This is a way to really get a, a big picture idea pretty quick of uh, the prospectivity within these zones. And that's our silver um, soil anomalism. And those are in circles here. And uh, what we can see is that, um, you know, in, in this, uh, let's see if I can get that uh, working here. Yeah, in this area right here, uh, we were able to uh, conduct uh, soil sampling going uh, roughly a kilometer or so further to the north of Jeff North. And we do have considerable amount of uh, silver anomalism is uh, visible in this, as well as zinc and mercury anomalism uh, that I'll show here shortly. Uh, but uh, we also did um, additional soil sampling in the Excelsior showing. This would be over on the uh, west limb of the SK anticline. These rocks were previously mapped as Bowser Lake um, group uh, rock, which would be post VMS. However, when we got our boots on the ground out there, we saw that that was incorrectly mapped. It's actually um, a lot of SK rhyolite breccia. So again, we're dealing with upper Hazelton group rocks all the way down here. And we've been able to show that the Coulter Creek thrust fault extends all the way from Sibluulu and comes right down through Excelsior right here. So this favorable horizon that was a focus a lot of drilling over the past 30 years up to the north actually extends further to the south. Um, one thing to note, uh, you'll see a, a very large gap in this area where there's really not much sampling. This is an incredibly rugged cliff filled area. That's uh, pretty much where the Unook River cuts across the SK anticline. Um, that's very difficult to access. We had to get our um, tree falling crews out there. They hiked two plus kilometers through swamp and cliffs and all sorts of rugged terrain just to get in two hilly pads out here to provide us accessibility for this upcoming season. Uh, because we're very uh, excited to get boots on the ground out in this area where we see once again another one of these sky tem anomalies kind of protruding out into the center of the SK anticline, very much like what we see at TV and Jeff here. So we've got uh, Jeff, TV, both associated with these protruding um, conductive anomalies, as well as this uh, stratiform conductor. Uh, right here in this area is very intriguing because that's not only where we're finding most of the mineralization at TV and Jeff, uh, we also are finding it up in the uh, the Tarn Lake area up here. So, you know, as I'd mentioned earlier, these sky time anomalies really do correspond to VMS sulfide mineralization. And now it's a matter of determining, does that also correspond to gold mineralization? I'd say at uh, TV, most certainly at uh, Jeff, most certainly, and then uh, going through Jeff North, we're getting into our higher temperature VMS system. But uh, I'd say it's very likely that uh, this entire trend right here um, has VMS um, strong, uh, like pearls along this entire trend. And then I would draw attention again to uh, our hexagon mercury showing a lot of our historic results working our way up the SK anticline and then pay attention to what our neighbors to the north are, are drilling recently. Um, you know, we're starting to show that this whole area is much more prospective uh, than uh, previously thought. Um, mm -hmm. So we're, oh, we're looking at um, 
more of these um, sky tim data, zooming in on the hexagon mercury showing uh, where we have a soil sample. So again, uh, we've got our um, silver soil anomalism continuing to the north of Jeff North, um, but very significantly, uh, we're dealing with um, additional zinc anomalism coming up through here. And really importantly, we've got a nice cluster of very high uh, mercury anomalism right here. A uh, part of our 2023 program, again, will really be to get boots on the ground and fill in the gap of missing information in this area. Uh, because as I should point out, uh, the hexagon mercury showings, which I'll um, outline the drill holes are right in this area. Um, everybody's welcome to look at the assessment report uh, from the 2003 program, uh, which will show that there's considerable mercury anomalism uh, within this area right here, as well as some pretty good gold intercepts. And we're dealing with this sort of a uh, conductive anomaly coming up from Jeff North extending through the hexagon mercury zone. So we're very um, excited to get boots on the ground out here and start to fill in this gap and in missing information because it certainly looks like um, based on uh, the preliminary work we were able to do this season, confirming we that the rock types are the same going from Jeff North up through this area, um, but also um, showing that, you know, we're, we're really starting to connect up towards um, our Lulu, Sib, and Eskate Creek showing. So it's really showing that we've got quite a large trend of VMS mineralization. And uh, just on the previous map where you highlighted dozens of targets in this area, how are you prioritizing the targets for 2023? So uh, we're going to be um, prioritizing based on um, data density. So obviously uh, there's quite a bit of data from Sib and Lulu and uh, Hexagon Mercury, widely spaced drill holes. I should note, uh, a lot of cases, these holes are two to 300 meters apart from each other, which is more than enough room to fit a 21A zone type of thing uh, between. There are several good um, gold and silver intercepts along this entire trend extending right up to our border uh, with um, Skeena resources. Um, and then there's a lot of uh, the gold rock chip samples, as you can see what these squares are um, on the screen here. Uh, these um, rock chip sample trends are showing that, uh, you know, there's quite a bit of um, prospectivity up here. So, um, you know, we have been waiting for the, um, the uh, Sea Bridge Road to be built. Uh, we're just gonna go for it and start um, drilling along this trend kind of infilling between these widely spaced uh, drill holes. Again, uh, looking at Skeena Resources, recent releases, uh, that seems they've had uh, quite a bit of success doing this infill drilling of, between widely spaced drill holes. Um, we have um, most of the um, mineralized horizons they've got extend onto our ground. So we'll be uh, working on that as well as uh, having a significant um, field mapping and sampling program, trying to get this um, rugged area that really hasn't been explored, uh, really fleshed out, and then obviously reserving um, the ability to conduct drilling if we see something that's really standing out to us. But everybody needs to realize um, this is a very rugged area. We have a very limited time frame because of the weather in which to explore this area, which requires all of us to be patient. Um, we wanna get the data uh, in this area before we drill it. So we will be working on uh, extending um, the Sib and Lulu and Hexagon and Mercury showing southwards and basically sandwiching in uh, this area right here, which we've been working northwards on this year. Now we're gonna work southwards um, and kind of you know close in on this um, area right in here with drilling. Um, and then obviously, um, we're going to be looking at Torn Lake um, quite a bit. Um, we're very excited about that area, and um, we're really looking forward to getting news out about um, the Torn Lake area here pretty soon. Now, can you run us through next year's exploration strategy um, and other VMS targets you've developed? Yes. So um, 
a lot of what we did this year um, focused on this um, Scarlet Ridge Torn Lake trend up here. Uh, we conducted extensive geological mapping uh, because the existing historic maps uh, really aren't that accurate, um, mostly owing to the uh, rugged nature of the country and the large scale of the maps. Uh, we've been able to show that we've got um, quite a bit of SK rhyolite hosted mineralization up here. So we did an extensive rock chip um, sampling campaign, as well as our maiden exploratory uh, drill programs uh, up here at Scarlet Ridge, Scarlet Valley, and Torn Lake. Um, we're very excited about um, coming back to this area up here. So we've done additional um, bleg uh, sampling up here to really kind of uh, subdivide some of these um, larger um, bleg drainage catchments up here. Um, Say we're, we're also, as I uh, said, we're going to be um, working our way from Sib southwards and kind of closing in and sandwiching in this area between Jeff North and uh, the Lulu zone. Um, and a lot of our work this season focused on these southern uh, bleg anomalies uh, right down in this area. Um, we're um, quite excited about the potential for orogenic gold down here. I'd say we're, we're definitely in the same stratigraphic units as TV and Jeff. So we're in this Betty Creek formation rock. Um, and there is some magmatic uh, nickel uh, copper sulfide mineralization uh, as well as uh, some VMS. But all this appears to have been overprinted by green schist metamorphism and cut by uh, quartz carbonate veining. And uh, when we followed up on a lot of the legacy high grade gold samples from this area, most of those came from these quartz veins. Uh, so we've actually identified our first, second, and third order geological structures and are starting to see uh, that this may uh, be a, uh, quite a large area of orogenic gold mineralization right here. Um, so again, our um, main focus is gold and silver um, and, and the VMS. So we're going to be still focusing on um, you know, the SIB uh, and Scarlet um, Tarn trends and looking for gold rich VMS, however, we will uh, be expanding our uh, uh, field work program, our mapping and sampling program, and getting out to many more of these uh, underexplored targets around the property, like uh, Virginia Lakes, which is uh, just to the east of the Harry Mouth Fault, um, has quite a bit of potential. There's some historic um, drill holes and surface sampling that indicates that there's quite a bit of um, potential for precious metal mineralization in Upper Hazleton Group rocks, as well as working our way southwards of um, our bleg anomalies in the south. Uh, there's the Big Red uh, prospect, which has several rock chip samples, um, well over 10 grams per ton of gold. Um, and it's over a very large Gaussianist area. The area really hasn't been characterized. It's possible uh, that it's a porphyry. We'll be getting boots on the ground to characterize that as well. So we're really casting a broad net as far as our field programs go uh, while keeping our drill programs focused on working our way um, along uh, the west limb of the SD anticline, kind of jumping over the hinge of the anticline and working our way um, southwards towards Jeff North, as well as uh, continuing our focus um, in particular on uh, Tarn Lake and Scarlet Knob. All right, John, we really appreciate you coming on today to give us these additional updates. Happy holidays, and we look forward to seeing the next set of results from SK. Thanks, Megan. Happy holidays, and I look forward to uh, talking to you again here in a few weeks.